What's up, y'all? Welcome to this week's edition of Thrones Wash, our weekly Game of Thrones vidcast. My name is Kyle Luke. This is Jamal Andrus. And today, we are going to talk about whatever the hell game Cersei is playing. We're going to talk about dwarf <laughs> And then we're also going to talk about the face marketplace that Arya is currently strolling in, aisle five. That girl is not ready to become no one. So, to get started, we want to talk about Arya and this marketplace of faces. We have coined that phrase, it is copyrighted. Please do not use it unless you speak with us. <laughs> so, she walks in and she's been trying to figure out what's been going on this whole time, and now she finds, or we find out, that the, what it really means to be a faceless man or woman. And my first thought is, this just doesn't seem very practical, right? Yeah, the logistics seem odd. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I'm thinking it's, it seems like it's the old Scooby-Doo trick. You just kind of slide it on your face. And I don't, I didn't think that would work. I could be wrong. Yeah, and as our producer Danny pointed out, how do you get to the faces at the top? Is that just like the sliding Home Depot ladder that you can just kind of <laughs> use? We need more information. Mr. Martin. So moving on to Dorn, um, or what I'm gonna call the cluster <laughs> that is Dorn, uh, Jamie uh, has successfully made his way um, to the water gardens of Dorn, where they're trying to uh, recapture their uh, his niece um, <laughs> from the uh, from the clutches of the Martell family. Um, what this one scene reminded me of in particular. Uh, was it somewhat of an iconic Will Ferrell movie scene, and that's the one in Anchorman. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. When all the news teams converge on one another, you have Jamie showing up, here ready to save the day, you have uh, his daughter and her, her, her betrothed, you know, hanging out. <laughs> his daughter's clearly in love with this guy. Clearly in she, love. <laughs> she doesn't want to go with dad anymore, and then here comes, you know, the other Martell henchmen to capture them, all converging on what was kind of a sloppy and quick put together fight scene. Um, and then the Sandsakes show up as well, just for good measure. One thing you might have missed that I picked up on Twitter today um, was Braun was actually cut by one of the spears from the Sand Snakes. And if you remember, the Martells are famous for, um, or Oberon Martell in particular was famous for dipping his spear in poison. So a little worried about our boy Braun. Braun. You are been. officially on Death Watch. Death Watch. So. Moving on. We have, once again, one of our favorite characters. I'm gonna gloat here a little bit. This is a prediction. Nice. When they finish the series, Tyrion is going to still be alive. No matter what situation oh. George R. R. Martin puts him in. Tyrion Lannister is invincible. He is not going to die. He is the smaller version of Superman for Westeros. The end. He... <laughs> Oh, was this close to death once again, which is kind of where he lies in general, where he prefers to be, I would mm -hmm. almost argue, and talks his way out of it, because that's what Tyrion Lannister does. Yeah, I, it was incredible. W week after week, we find another way that, that Tyrion is able to, to talk his way out of what seems like certain death, this time involving him bragging about his man parts <laughs> and what that can fetch on the open <laughs> merchant trade, which is a thing. Wonderful. Moving on, we also have a serious, I, I don't even know what to call it, a, 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 a petty battle, just the, a game of wits going between Queen Marjorie <laughs> and Queen Mother, Cersei. It just continues to get worse and worse and worse between these two, but Kyle has pointed out, and I completely concur, that I think this is gonna go wrong for Cersei before it's all said and done. Yeah, so Cersei is really good at playing the short Game of Thrones where she's able to manipulate her enemies and her foes in a quick, in a quick manner um, that works in the interim. And you're seeing that played out as she is, you know, put, you know, she's armed the Faith Militant, they have arrested Sir Loras, and now, in what was sort of a brilliant quick fix, um, in turn, you know, they've arrested Marjorie as well for perjury. Um, or what the equivalent, the Westeros, the Westeros, <laughs> Westeros equivalent of perjury. Um, however, Cersei has to realize this and she has to be somewhat nervous that the things that she's getting everyone arrested for will eventually come right back to bite her in the ass. The Faith are running amok right now. They cannot be stopped and they are arresting queens and whatnot. The <laughs> fact that they arrested Queen Marjorie should tell Cersei that 
She's also the product, um, or has churned out many products of incest within across the Seven Kingdoms now. And this is kind of a well-known secret yes. within the walls of King's Landing. People know about it. Um, so the fact that she is arming the Faith Militant, they're arresting people for things like homosexuality. The Faith Militant, the only thing they hate more than homosexuality is incest. Um, we did want to cover real quick one of the most disturbing and graphic parts of this episode. The disturbing, awful scene uh, that was the rape of, of Sansa um, at the sadistic um, hands of uh, Ramsay Bolton. Obviously an, an, just an atrocious scene, something that's brutal for anyone to watch. Um, and the reaction today has been pretty swift. Um, to say the least. George R. R. Martin has weighed in and mentioned that, you know, weighing in without weighing in really, because he commented on how the book uh, differs from the show, but didn't really go into his opinions or his thoughts on how the show portrayed it, other than he supported the show's direction. Um, even the actress who plays Sansa, Sophie Turner, she also weighed in and said that she was actually all, very much um, in favor of the scene herself. But that's in stark contrast to what we're seeing um, online with a lot of viewers and fans reacting um, to the horror that was that just absolutely brutal, painful scene. And for, and for a show that you know, specializes in pushing the limit, in finding, in showing the most graphic scenes, you know, that are on television right now. Um, I think it has been, it has been interesting to watch the fans' reaction. Mm -hmm. People who, you know, sat through, have seen, sat through five seasons of this, mm -hmm. or four seasons of this, and to see, I think, the largest reaction to, yeah that we've seen to a particular choice by the directors. Yeah, that's true. And, and it, also, you know, because it's not in the books, because mm -hmm. that part isn't in the books, um, I think that that creates a whole nother rabbit hole that you can go down. And then real quick, before we wind up, we wanted to uh, end this with our last segment of the, of the show, and that is Thrones Watch, where we Thrones are going Watch. to do a quick power rankings of who's at the top and who's at the bottom of of the Game of Thrones right now. <laughs> so at the top of this week's Thrones Watch, I'm gonna put a temporary top. I do think the Lannisters, um, led by Cersei and her puppet Tommen, um, are at the top of Thrones Watch. She was able to put Marjorie Tyrell in prison. Um, they are the most powerful. They obviously have the throne right now, and right now it looks okay for them. Who knows next week when I, like I said, I think Cersei's gonna be in jail. Soon. We're both putting an expiration an expiration date on that. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah, you're calling Danny here. See, I, I think Danny always has to be at, at number three or lower until she <laughs> leaves where she's stuck. Until she can get everyone together and just get out. She's at number three for me. But at number two, I think in that case, we have to put Baratheon, Stannis. Yeah, Stannis is marching on Winterfell. He's the one with the most, the plan that we are most privy to in terms of recapturing the throne. We know he wants to march on Winterfell, take out the Boltons en route to um, King's Landing, where he plans on taking back the throne there as well. However, um, neither one of those characters were featured in last in last week's episode, right. so it's hard to say. It's kind of up in the air right now, but I would agree. I think it goes Lannisters one, uh, Stannis two, and Danny still chilling in the quagmire at Marine hanging out with all her, her, her dragons and political <laughs> maneuverings. But it'll be interesting to see. So uh, yeah, stay with us. Uh, thanks for watching this week. And same uh, time next week, guys. See you then.